When beginners enter into the world of espresso, they are immediately bombarded with tons of numbers. 9 bar, 25 to 30 seconds, 18 grams in, 36 grams out, 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. It's a lot to take in. That's why today I wanted to focus on one small part of that equation that often causes some of the most confusion shot time, and how to time your shots. You see, the crux of this debate centers around when to start the timer. Some tutorials will show you starting at button push, and others once you start to see the first drips in the cup. And both methods have tons of people willing to defend why one is clearly better than the other. For those in favor of timing from button push, there is one leading argument. And that is, from the second that hot water begins to contact the coffee bed, extraction has already begun. And with espresso, small changes in water contact time or water volume can lead to very large changes in the overall taste because of how quickly the extraction process is occurring. So it only makes sense to start timing as soon as the pump turns on so that you're not ignoring this initial part of the extraction. Just because nothing is coming out of the bottom of the puck does not mean important things aren't happening. In contrast, those who argue for timing from first drip have a different but equally valid argument. Depending on which machine you are using, the length of time and what happens flow-wise between when the pump turns on and when the first drips exit the puck can vary drastically. For example, rotary pumps can deliver higher flow more quickly than vibratory pumps. Or what about machines that offer a low pressure pre-infusion? How long is that pre-infusion? How low is low pressure? When timing from button push, these differences can lead to vastly different extractions even though you use the same extraction time. When timing from first drip, you are consciously making the decision to only start observing and timing the puck's behavior once it has reached a level of saturation such that drips have started to exit the bottom. The result of this is potentially more consistent and widely replicable timings for people who are using a different system than the one you are. So, which one is right and which one should you be using? In order to answer that, we need to figure out one key element that is almost always overlooked in this discussion. What are you trying to accomplish by timing your shots in the first place? Most beginner dialing in videos list times of 25 to 30 seconds simply because they are trying to get viewers dialed in to a reasonable flow rate before they start tasting the shots. That's it. So for this purpose, time however you'd like. You're aiming for a ballpark flow rate, not a final product. And this flow rate could be wildly different than what is required for your beans or your personal taste, which is why any dialing in video worth its weight won't stop there. It will continue to tell you how to tweak to taste once it makes sense to start tasting. However, most people aren't hugely interested in that. Viewership tends to drop off pretty severely once you stop giving one-size-fits-all solutions and start explaining how to tweak extraction for your beans and personal taste. In contrast, if you are talking about a specific coffee and are trying to communicate to someone how to replicate a specific recipe for that coffee, then going into more detail about how exactly you timed becomes more important, and aiming for a specific shot time makes more sense because it is no longer a completely arbitrary number like it is in most dialing in videos. In this scenario, give as much detail as possible. Use a combination of both timing methods. Saying that you had a 10 second pre-infusion and a 40 second total shot time is far more useful than simply quoting a start to finish number. Once you're dealing with a dialed in shot, shot time can be used to measure your consistency from shot to shot. And if your puck prep is good enough, it could even be used to replace a scale if you really wanted to. In this scenario, pick whichever timing method you like, because between you and your machine, there is no one there to judge you. My recommendation is to pick up a scale with an espresso mode and simply glance at the time as the shot finishes, giving yourself a pat on the back if it came close to your dialed in number, or taking a mental note if it was slightly far off. I'll leave a few scales that I recommend down in the description below that all have this type of espresso mode. At the best of times, Timing is an approximate indicator of shot quality that must be used in conjunction with tasting and tweaking. I have had amazing 20 second shots and amazing 50 second shots. And if that's what tastes best to you with your coffee, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.